Hello, hello, and welcome to another deck profile video. This time, I'm going to profile my latest Magic the Gathering Commander deck, uh, based on Izoni the Thousand-Eyed. So this is a black-green Golgari graveyard combo deck, uh, which is something that I had never done before making this one. I had a reanimator deck, I had a mill deck, but graveyard combo was something else. So I thought it would be fun to give this a try. Izoni is not one of the more popular Golgari commanders, but, uh, well, let's, let's take a look at her abilities, huh? So, Undergrowth. When she enters the battlefield, you create a black and green insect token for each creature in your graveyard. And for a couple mana, you can sacrifice another creature uh, to gain a life and draw a card. So that second ability is not why I use her. It's all about this first one, making a bunch of insects. Uh, because with a few other cards, you can actually combo off of that and do all sorts of things. So ideally, you don't want to actually play her until you can use her to win after a bit of setup. Uh, although that second ability, I mean, if you're running out of gas, you can use that to draw cards if you have to. It's not a bad thing to be there. So, uh, let's take a look at the deck then, shall we? Now this giant pile of cards here is all the creatures and stuff. This is all lands. Uh, we can go over that later. Being a commander deck, of course, there's a hundred cards total. Only one maximum of every card, except basic lands. So, Elvish Reclaimer. The thing about this deck, another thing I wanted to do was make it kind of elf tribal. So there's a lot of small one mana elves, and being one mana, that is important. And you'll see why later, I'll, I'll explain it. Uh, but anyway, Elvish Reclaimer, great card, digs out the good lands that you want. And, equally important, it puts other lands in your graveyard. Uh, Land War Elves, tap for mana. Findhorn Elves, tap for mana. Elvish Mystic, tap for mana. Elves of Deep Shadow, tap for mana. Boreal Druid, tap for mana. Draga Tree Speaker, you guessed it, taps for mana. Deathrite Shaman can tap for mana, but does all sorts of stuff. It's a very powerful card. Uh, again, though, only one mana. Priest of Titania. Now, this is one of the mega mana producers who adds a mana for every elf in play. This can get crazy. Elvish Archdruid. Same thing, a little more mana heavy to play in the first place, but again, taps for a mana for every elf you, you know, only every elf you control. So it's a little worse, it doesn't count your opponent's elves, but you know, that's probably an un unintended side effect of Priest of Titania anyway. Uh, Spring Bloom Druid is a neat uh, elf. Uh, yeah, there we go, that's sort of in focus. Um, when it enters, you sacrifice a land and then search for up to two basic lands and put them onto the battlefield. So again, it fills your graveyard and your field with land. Uh, let's put these elves aside for the time being, so that I can actually hold on to this better. Dead Eye Tracker is not an elf. Uh, however, he exiles cards from your opponent's graveyards, and that can be helpful with what this deck tries to do. Scavenging Ooze, again. A great card for eating through your opponent's graveyards. You don't want them to benefit from your own strategy. And Ramonap Excavator, a lot of land ends up being ditched into the graveyard. You've probably seen, you know, already that that could happen. So this just helps you get it back. You can play land directly from your graveyard. Not bad. And then we get to some of the mana ramp. Mana ramp that is not based on elves. So, Sol Ring, I mean, it's a commander deck, right? You're probably going to run Sol Ring. It's too good to not use. Bog Witch, on the other hand, uh, this is a card that I don't see very often, but it's really good. You can discard a card from your hand to add triple black to your mana pool. It just turns any card into a dark ritual. It's good. It's really good. Especially in a graveyard deck. Uh, harvest season, with all these elves tapping for mana, this can net you a lot of land. Far Wanderings, uh, because it has Threshold, so I tried to theme the, uh, at least a couple of the ramp spells around graveyard mechanics. So normally it only searches for one basic land, 
but if you have a big enough graveyard, it searches for three. And three land for three mana is huge. And Primal Growth. You can sacrifice a creature when you play it. Uh, if you do, you search for two basic lands. If you don't, you search for one. But again, fills your graveyard, gets land into play. It's a good card. And here... Let's get into the engine that really makes this deck run. So these are the card draw cards. Grim Horospex draws a card whenever a creature dies. Uh, a creature you control, that is. Midnight Reaper, same deal. Whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. Uh, Non-token, though. Smothering Abomination, whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Harvester of Souls, whenever a non-token creature dies, draw a card. Beast Whisperer, whenever you cast a creature, draw a card. Primordial Sage, same ability. Soul of the Harvest, whenever a non-token enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So, hopefully, with all these, you can be drawing a lot of cards. And Underrealm Lich is just a ridiculous Golgari card that kind of needs to be used. If you would ever draw a card, instead look at the top three cards, put one into your hand, the rest into the graveyard. Like, th this is crazy, actually. And now, here we have a little bit of recursion. You know, it is a graveyard deck, right? So a lot of stuff goes to the graveyard. We have Eternal Witness, the classic, just bring something back to your hand. Nyx Weaver, uh, you can exile it from play to do the same thing as Eternal Witness, or you can just keep it in play and every turn you mill two of your own cards. Timeless Witness is a new one from Modern Horizons 2. Uh, it's kind of a bit more expensive than Eternal Witness, but it has Eternalize, so you can actually just use this from your graveyard if you're smart about it, you can actually get two uses out of it, so it's definitely worth running. And Golgari Find Broker is a worse Eternal Witness, but it is an elf. So it's, it's worth using, I think. It's not bad. So now, it is a black deck. So, of course, it has tutors. Only a few. I don't like running too many tutors. I'd rather just run cards that I want to play, but... Yeah, it never hurts to have a couple, so Burning Rune Demon is a really cool card. Uh, you search for two cards, an opponent chooses one, and one goes to the graveyard, one goes to your hand. Like, it's, it's great. Especially in a graveyard deck, because you probably want pretty much anything to go to your graveyard. Uh, let's see, Diabolic Intent, Sacrifice a Creature, Search for Anything, Put it in Your Hand. Demonic Tutor, Search for Anything, Put it in Your Hand. Good cards. Now then. Removal. Black Green has some excellent removal spells. Uh, Wither Bloom Command, I mean, it's cheap, it's only two mana. And it does a huge list of things, so it's, it's really not bad. Uh, Abrupt Decay, very powerful, destroys anything small, that, and it can't be countered, so just get rid of stuff. Assassin's Trophy, again, two mana, destroy target permanent, like, you can't go wrong. Cross and Grip, split second. Crazy. Beast Within, destroy target permanent, yeah, why not? Uh, putrefy, artifact or creature, yeah. Maelstrom Pulse, uh, this one's only sorcery speed, but again, destroy target non-land permanent and all other permanents with that name. It can easily clear a whole bunch of tokens if you need it to, like, it's a good card. Uh, attrition, sacrifice a creature, destroy a non-black creature. If you have a lot of useless creatures in play. This is a good thing to, you know, put them to work doing. Uh, Death Sprout is a really interesting kill spell. It destroys something and then you ramp for a land. Hey, sure. A little expensive at four mana, but still not bad. Toxic Deluge is a very cheap and, although it costs you life to use, very powerful board wipe. And Culling Ritual. Destroy each non-land permanent, mana value two or less, and then add mana for each permanent destroyed this way. A crazy card. Again, wipes out tokens, wipes out small mana rocks. Nothing wrong with that. So this right here is a Hermit Druid. Where I think I've... yeah, this is the section of self-mill cards, I believe. Hermit Druid just... Reveals from the top of your library until you reveal a basic land, put that into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. 
So if you didn't have any basic lands, you would mill your entire library with one ability activation. I didn't build this deck to do that because I think that's silly, I still want to play the game, but it is a good way to get a bunch of stuff into your graveyard. Uh, Golgari Grave Troll has Dredge 6, so if this is in your graveyard and you would draw a card, you can mill 6 and draw this instead. Alter the Brood, whenever something comes into play, uh, your opponents each mill a card. So this one isn't self-mill, yeah. But if you're playing a lot of tokens, like with the Commander, you can mill out your opponents. And Mesmeric Orb, of course, another classic mill card. Whenever anything becomes untapped, its controller mills a card. So, including you. It's good for you, hopefully not for your opponents. And now we get into some of the most potent stuff in the deck. Viscera Seer, Sacrifice a Creature, Scry 1. That is not important. Sacrificing a creature for free is. Uh, Woe Strider, same ability. Sacrifice a Creature, Scry 1. Uh, but it can escape from the graveyard, so that's a handy ability to have. Ashnod's Altar, sacrifice a creature, add mana. This is actually a win condition. Same with Phyrexian Altar. Sacrifice a creature, add mana. Crazy. Evolutionary Leap is less of a win condition, but it's still a, you know, kind of universal sack outlet. Um, it just costs mana to use, so it's not as good, but still useful. Now then. Dread Return is a reanimator spell that can be cast from the graveyard. That is important. Pitiless Plunderer. Whenever another creature you control dies, you make a treasure token. So this turns all of your creatures into mana if you have another way to sacrifice them. Very, very powerful card. Nim Death Mantle. This is part of the combo. Whenever one of your creatures dies, you can pay four and then bring it back with this equipped to it. Sir Conrad the Grim. Uh, whenever anything happens to your graveyard, pretty much, it does a damage to each opponent. So, if you can somehow make an infinite loop, that is infinite damage. And Worm Harvest is similar to Izoni, in that this creates worm tokens for each land in your graveyard, but it has Retrace, so you can keep casting it over and over again. It's kind of a backup in case something happens to your commander. And then we have Tyvar Kel. We're getting into the Planeswalkers here. Just a solid elf commander. Or Planeswalker, sorry. Frey Elise, Lanowar's Fury. Again, works well with elves and does other good things. Liliana, Death's Majesty. A lot of just graveyard mechanics. Mills yourself, brings stuff back. It's good. Liliana, Dreadhorde General is another card that makes you draw when your things die, and it makes zombies and stuff. It does things, it's a powerful card. And that brings us to this pile of land, which is a lot less exciting. Uh, Balagad Recovery, Agadim's Awakening, Turn Timber Symbiosis, these are the flip lands. So they have spells on one side, land on the other. Uh, note of Coolness, if you have one of these in the graveyard, and you have Ramanup Excavator in play, you can play them from the graveyard as a land. So that's cool. Dakmar Salvage is a land with dredge. So like the Golgari Grave Troll, you can bring it back from the graveyard, which is very relevant. Urborg, turn all your stuff into swamps. Turn everybody's lands into swamps. Cabal Coffers, taps for the number of swamps you have. Very good with Urborg. Gaia's Cradle, because it's Gaia's Cradle and I have one, so might as well use it. It's crazy. Uh, Nykthos, again, adds a lot of mana. Crypt of Agadim can add a lot of mana. It's a bit more tame than the other ones, but still. Uh, Deserted Temple untaps any other land, so you can untap your big lands like Gaia's Cradle and get extra uses out of them. Uh, Scavenger Ground, uh, Sacrifice, well, it's the only desert in the deck, so Sacrifice itself and Exile all graveyards. It's a good... Um, like, emergency reset button if you absolutely need it. Volrath Stronghold brings your creatures back. Yavabaya Hollow regenerates your creatures. And then we've got the fetch lands. So, Verdant Catacombs, Prismatic Vista, Fabled Passage, just search for specific lands you want. And, yeah, Bayou, Overgrown Tomb, we've got 
all the dual lands that I think are kind of worth running the pathways. Yeah, a whole bunch that just tap for either color, or both in this case. And command tower, yeah, and a few basics because they're easy to search for. So, that is a general overview of the deck. Uh, I'm just gonna get organized here, and then I will be back in a second to go over some cool combos. Alrighty then, so, earlier I said it was important that there were so many little one-drop elves in this deck. Why is that? Well, it's because if you take a look at my card draw engine here, I really want for every time a creature dies, or every time a creature comes into play, for you to be drawing cards. So, really, that just keeps your hand full of hopefully more small stuff that you can play and draw cards, and then sacrifice somehow and draw more cards, and it really does function as an engine that just keeps the entire deck moving at a good pace. So if you don't have your combo pieces immediately, you can dig for them very quickly. Now, what are these combo pieces? Well, again, it is Worm Harvest and, of course, the commander, Izoni herself. Uh, both of them require you to have a healthy graveyard to begin with, so there is some gameplay here. There is no infinite graveyard mill. Uh, you do actually have to play the game. But, again, that's the point. I want to play the game. <laughs> so, how does this work, then? How do you go from creating a bunch of little worms or insects to winning the game? Well, the first thing you want is one of these free uh, sacrifice outlets. Uh, either ones that create mana themselves or ones that don't. Uh, of course, if they don't create their own mana, you need something like Pitiless Plunderer to be in play as well and create mana that way. But, you know, it, it, all, it all works out the same way in the end. So, what happens is, you play a Zoni, and you make a bunch of bugs, and you have Nim Death Mantle in play. So if you sacrifice a Zoni for mana or whatever, this will trigger. You can pay four by sacrificing her bugs. And then you bring Izoni back, which will create more bugs, which you can sacrifice to bring her back again and again and again and again. Uh, that's an infinite combo with Nim Death Mantle. So that is infinite Izonis dying and infinite Izonis coming back into play. And therefore infinite uh, insect tokens coming into play. So, Altar of the Brood will then mill out your opponents infinitely, and or Sir Conrad will deal infinite damage. Uh, does, does he actually do damage or do they lose life? No, he does damage. So, yeah, I, I, it, it doesn't matter, it's infinite. That's a large not number. So that is the primary way you want to win. But Worm Harvest, though, is there just in case something goes awry. So, remember earlier, we had Dakmore Salvage, and I said that this having Dredge is relevant. Well, in order to cast Worm Harvest again, you need to retrace it by discarding a land. So you can discard this Dakmore Salvage to bring Worm Harvest back, and then, if you are able to uh, draw cards by sacrificing those worms, you can dredge two and bring Dakmore Salvage back again. Focus, please. And bring Dakmore Salvage back again and cast Worm Harvest again and just loop it that way. It's not infinite this time, unfortunately, because it is actually limited to the number of times you can bring Dakmore Salvage back. But still, hopefully, with an army of worms of that size, you can do you know, something similar and just, you know, kill people with Sir Conrad or Altar of the Brood them out, whatever. It, it all works. So yeah, that in the long and short of it is uh, how the deck works. Um, it actually functions quite well. I, I've played it a number of times and I'm actually quite happy with it. Um, 
it requires a lot of thinking. I, I always feel like there's some ideal move that I could be making, but I'm not. So uh, sometimes the, the turns take a while as I loop through cards and try to figure out what I'm doing. But in the end, it functions. It gets me there. So um, I hope you enjoyed this little overview of my most recent commander deck. Uh, if there's anything you can think of that would benefit this deck, then by all means share it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. But that also brings us to the end of this deck overview video. So if you enjoyed it, then please leave a like, a comment, subscribe, and I do hope that you join me again next time for whatever deck I might be going over next, <laughs> and whenever that might be. Uh, yeah, these are kind of few and far between, but... Ah, whatever. Till next time. Ta-ta.